Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Red Bank Public Library. I'm Sierra Williams. I'm the children's librarian here. And today I'm going to have a fun conversation with a new friend. Her name is Lisa Rogers, and she's written three books that we have here in our collection. She's here to talk about this book today. It's a picture book biography called 16 Words, William Carlos Williams and the Red Wheelbarrow. And it's about a writer. And so I'm going to talk to her about what interested her in writing this story. I'm going to talk to her about what it's like to be a writer and to um, publish a book. And I'm also going to talk to her about New Jersey. She's in Boston right now, but she grew up really only a couple towns away from Red Bank. And so I definitely want to invite her to come and visit us sometime. But I'm so glad that she could join us virtually today for this reading of 16 Words. She's going to read the book to us and then I'll have a little conversation. I hope you'll stick with us and that you enjoy our time with Lisa Rogers today. All right, here she comes. Read you this picture book, 16 Words, William Carlos Williams and the Red Wheelbarrow. It's written by me and illustrated by Chuck Groning and published by Schwartz and Wade, a division of Penguin Random House. This book is about a man who was from New Jersey and I'm from New Jersey and I know that your readers are in New Jersey right now. So it's especially fun for me to be reading this to you. The, this man, William Carlos Williams, sitting at the typewriter was a writer, but he was also a doctor. And what was interesting to me and what inspired me to write this book was his friendship with this man, Thaddeus Marshall, who is pushing a wheelbarrow. He lived near William Carlos Williams. He grew vegetables and sold them in Rutherford, New Jersey, but he was also a patient of Dr. Williams and they cared for each other. They were friends. So with that introduction, let's start reading the book. The reason this book is called 16 Words is because William Carlos Williams wrote a 16 word poem inspired by his friendship with Thaddeus Marshall. And this 16 word poem was written almost a hundred years ago, but it's still very famous. And I think it's famous because in just a few words, it expresses a lot of beautiful emotion. Chuck Groning did a lovely job illustrating the chickens in this book that are in the poem. And Thaddeus Marshall indeed had this type of chicken in his um, chicken coop in Rutherford. So poets spend a lot of time noticing. And so I invite you to notice too the world around you right now this book starts with a question. Look out the window. What do you see? If you are Dr. William Carlos Williams, you see a wheelbarrow, a drizzle of rain, chickens scratching in the damp earth. Perhaps Dr. Williams is waiting to read a thermometer. Maybe he has just written a prescription, or if his young patient feels up to a game, shuffled a deck of playing cards. He looks up, looks out, and notices. And who does he notice? Can you see? William Carlos Williams really did bring playing cards to his young patients. The wheelbarrow belongs to Mr. Thaddeus Marshall. Dr. Williams is the Marshall's family doctor. Day after day, Mr. Marshall picks up his tools, a watering can, a rake, a trowel. He cares for his garden at 11 Elm Street in Rutherford, New Jersey. And you can go down Elm Street and you can see the house where Thaddeus Marshall lives. And there's a chicken. <laughs> and do you see the wheelbarrow? Stepping around his chickens, he turns the soil, pulls weeds, 
harvests greens. He plucks ripe vegetables and carries them to his wheelbarrow. Then he lifts the wheelbarrow's handles and balances it on his single tire. His son Milton shoes the chickens away. Milton worked on the railroad and the train still does run right through the middle of Rutherford. And Mr. Marshall pushes his wheelbarrow through the streets of Rutherford. He depends on the wheelbarrow to carry the vegetables he sends to his neighbors. And do you see someone there? Typing away. And this is one of the houses that William Carlos Williams lived in. You can see it. It's still in Rutherford. You can go there and look at it. Day after day, Dr. Williams picks, also picks up his tools, a stethoscope, syringes, a blood pressure cuff, a thermometer, and more. He packs his black doctor's bag and lifts it by its two handles. He cares for his patients in his office at Nine Ridge Road. He cares for patients at their homes. And if you go to the Rutherford Museum, you can see many of Dr. Williams' tools. He bandages wounds, checks temperatures, and listens to heartbeats. He treats children with measles and chicken pox. He brings many babies, at least 3,000 into this world. Dr. Williams depends on his doctor's bag to carry the tools he needs. Along with his stethoscope and syringes, he carries a pen. A pen for writing prescriptions, a pen for crafting poems. Writing poems brings Dr. Williams joy and he fits in his writing around his doctoring. If he's in his office, he uses the time between appointments to tap on his typewriter. He writes about trees, a fire engine, cats, and plums. He chooses the words for his poetry as carefully as he examines his patients. If he's finishing a house, if he's making a house call, he scribbles poems on his prescription pad. I love this illustration because not only can you see Thaddeus Marshall, but you can see what Rutherford looked like then in the 1920s and how it may have changed today. Not much, actually. He writes about his town and the people who live there. There's so much to look at in these illustrations. And there's the train station and the train tracks. There he is noticing. Dr. Williams visits Eleven Elm where Mr. Marshall and his wife Alice raised their sons, Milton, Hiram, Victor, Leon, and Thaddeus Jr. Perhaps he is there to set a broken arm or to soothe a high fever. Perhaps he is caring for Mr. Marshall who has been ill. And there's Milton showing Dr. Williams the way upstairs. Dr. Williams pauses. He looks out the bedroom window toward the garden. He sees rain falling. It falls on the chickens scrabbling in the dirt, their feathers dingy white. It falls on Mr. Marshall's wheelbarrow, red and weathered, sturdy and strong. The rain streaks the window, soaks the garden, drips into the roots of Mr. Marshall's vegetable plants, helping them grow. Dr. Williams grasps his pen. He begins to write. He writes of what he notices, the wheelbarrow, the chickens, the rain, the yard. He writes a poem using just 16 words. Those 16 words do not describe Mr. Marshall's chicken coop or the train rattling nearby. They do not describe Mr. Marshall hefting that wheelbarrow or the aches and pains he suffers from stooping to care for his plants. They do not describe Mr. Marshall's life of work or caring or love, but somehow they say just that. And here's the poem. 
So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. I think that poem is so touching and beautiful, and I'm so happy to have shared this book with you. In the back of the book, which you can find at your library, is a note explaining more about Dr. Williams and how he became a poet. And um, I hope that you are inspired to read more about him and read some of his other poems. One of my favorites is This Is Just To Say um, and As The Cat. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed this book. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for being with us today at the Red Bank Public Library, and thanks for reading your book to us. Hi, Sarah. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, this is always so fun. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I grew up in West Long Branch, and I was there until I went to college, and my parents moved to Massachusetts, so that's how I ended up here in the Boston area but I still have family on the Jersey shore and I go back and visit often. I love the beach. I love visiting family and New Jersey is my home. Yeah, and West Long Branch is right around the corner from Red Bank, so that's cool. Um, I think I read in your bio that you were a children's librarian, is that true? It is true yeah. and my, <laughs> <laughs> my very first job was at the West Long Branch Public Library where I shelved books and at that time I wanted to be a writer but I didn't really know what I would write and I would shelf books and look to see oh maybe my name would go here on this shelf but I honestly never pictured myself as a children's book writer because I didn't really know that much about children's books somehow I feel like once I started to read I sort of skipped over many books or that many new wonderful books now have been published that I love and that's all I read. Yeah. I love being a children's librarian. I love being with my students and because I read so many books with students and saw their reactions to the books, I started to fall in love with picture books and decided that I wanted to try writing them. That is awesome. Picture books really are my favorite. I love reading picture books and I'm happy to hear you say that. So yeah, why don't you tell us what you what got you interested in writing this story about William Carlos Williams? And the White Wheel? Well, I was reading the New York Times one morning and I noticed that there was a story about the owner of the Red Wheelbarrow. I was an English literature major. I love poetry. I know the poem. I taught the red wheelbarrow to my students, my first grade students. And for some reason, I'd never thought about the owner of the wheelbarrow. I don't know why. But <laughs> when I realized that there was a person who used the wheelbarrow, especially one who used it to earn his living, to um, bring vegetables to the people of Rutherford, New Jersey, where he lived and where the poet William Carlos Williams lived, I knew I wanted to write the story. And what was especially special to me was that knowing that Thaddeus Marshall, who was the owner of the wheelbarrow, and here is a photograph of him wow. in front of his garden in Rutherford. Um, Thaddeus was a a friend of William Carlos Williams and it was also his patient because William Carlos Williams was a doctor as well as a poet and they lived very close to each other in Rutherford so you could, I could imagine them walking to each other's homes or seeing mm -hmm. each other on the street. That's really neat and as you held up the picture of um, that man I noticed the bald head and the <laughs> Is that, did the yes. illustrator have that picture? As a yes, I, I shared it with him. This picture was um, given to me by Thaddeus Marshall's great granddaughter. And I met with her in New Jersey at my mom's house. She came down from Northern New Jersey to meet with me and tell me about Thaddeus. 
talk to me about her family, how proud she was of her family. And she also described the home to me because she lived there at 11 Elm Street in Rutherford. So it was just wonderful to be able to have this special connection with someone who, um, who knew and loved Thaddeus. So. Yeah, that's really special that you were able to meet her. It was. That insight into that um, history. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of writing the book and what it's like to be an author, how you found your illustrator, and that kind of behind the scenes? Sure. So I, after I read the article, I knew I wanted to write a picture book. And I had written some funny fiction picture book manuscripts that I had tried to send out to publishers, but nothing happened with those. And I think it was because I really needed to have my heart in the story. I needed to feel a really strong emotional connection with the story. And that's what happened when I read this article. So we were going on a trip and I took my little notebook with me, this tiny little notebook. Mm -hmm. And I'm a kind of active person. I'm always running around. So it's really hard for an author to be an author if you don't sit still, right? But I was on a train and I had thought and thought about this story and I thought about how I wanted to write it, but I, I didn't dare yet write anything down because I wanted it to be um, very thoughtful. So I brought this little notebook with me and right here on the train, we were on a train and right here, I wrote my little notebook, so much depended on a red wheelbarrow. Day after day, Thaddeus Marshall picked up his tools. And that's how I started writing it. And when I got home, I typed what I had into the computer. I did a lot more research, a lot more research, and um, sent it to an agent who liked it, asked me to revise it a little bit which I did, I sent it back to her along with some other manuscripts I had written and she agreed to represent me, which was a huge milestone. And I was absolutely thrilled when that happened. After that, she was able to sell the manuscript to um, an editor at Penguin Random House. And that editor chose the fabulous Chuck Gronink to illustrate the book. And it just came out so beautiful. Um, with his expertise and his deep thinking and his own deep research about, about the, these two people and where they lived and what they did, he created something just so yeah. lovely and tender. The illustrations are really beautiful and it's just a really nice story. And thank you for sharing it with us. Um, why don't you tell us what else you have going on over my shoulder, I think <laughs> over your shoulder too, we have, <laughs> couple of your other books, How Won't Go, which is super cute. And that's been um, circulating a lot this summer. Oh, good. Yeah, I think you um, contributed a couple of poems to this book, right. which I love the title of Friends and Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> My okay. friend Audrey Day Williams titled that book and it's so clever. She's a very funny and, uh, and smart writer. So that's a collection of ocean poems. And that was really fun to come up with poems about the place I love the most, which is the, the beach. And I wrote one about the um, egg cases of a skate and another, which I titled Mermaid's Luggage because the skate egg case, I usually have one right near me, but <laughs> I can't reach it. So um, reminded me of luggage. And I wrote another one about bioluminescence at the beach. So um, it, that's beautifully illustrated too. And there's all sorts of poems in there. Plus there's a really nice lesson about the environment and treating the things we love with care. So, um, that's Thank published you. by the Writer's Loft Press. The Writer's Loft is a writing community here in Massachusetts. So I've taken many classes and workshops there. Um, Are you still writing? Oh yes, I'm still writing. So <laughs> first I must say that Hound Won't Go is based on my own dog who was very stubborn and legendary all around 
for not going or sleeping on other people's lawns or stopping people in traffic. And so that was very fun to write. And that, um, the editor for that book chose this fabulous illustrator, Maggie Ishihara, to create her idea of Hound and where Hound was, because that was not in my words. I, as a writer, I feel like it's really important to leave as much as you can up to the illustrator because it's a, a pairing, it's a collaboration, mm -hmm. and it's a fun surprise when you get to see the artwork. Right. So um, right now I am finishing up revising six picture book manuscripts that have been sold and will be coming out in the next couple of years, two or three years. Yeah, That's it's fantastic. Been, it's been a great time and I'm really honored that my work has been chosen for publication because I know how important it is to give great books to children yeah. and so it's just, it's a privilege to be able to do this. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on all your good work. We will keep our eye out. You're going to let me know when your books uh, come out so we can add them to our collection. Maybe we'll have a whole shelf of Lisa Rogers books <laughs> in our Red Bank Public Library. And when you come back to New Jersey, be sure to come to the Red Bank Public Library. You could scribble a little... Um, you know, inscription at least for us. Too. I'd be happy to. I hope to see you soon, Sierra. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Take care. You too. Bye.